Thank you. Good morning. Um, is the microphone on? Yeah. Okay, here we are. Um, so first of all, thank you very much for this opportunity. Thanks, many thanks to Invalsi for his work. And uh, I start with the credit because the idea behind this paper here comes exactly from Daniele, seated by me, uh, which actually suggests this, this trick I'm going to, to present to you today. Now, this is a joint work with Giorgio Brunello, Lisha Agarwal from the University of Padova. Um, and it's a sort of follow on of the paper that I presented in this conference uh, in 2018 uh, in, in Bari. Um, so let me start with the motivation and then um, I, I, I gave you the details of our work. Um, now, it is pretty clear that uh, the performance in standardized tests depends not only on how much students know, but also depends on who are the students, what are the characteristics of the students, the non their non-cognitive abilities, their motivation, their effort, their attention to the test. And so it's pretty important to disentangle from the test scores what is the component which depends on knowledge and which is the component which depends on other things, because otherwise our tests are not a good measure if the purpose of using tests is that of measuring uh, competencies and cognitive abilities. Um, well, uh, you know, it is um, a few years that the number of papers appears that uh, try to estimate uh, something about this additional component of the scores, the one especially which depends on fatigue, which depends on concentration and effort on the test. And there are a number of papers that show that, uh, well, if you move a given question from the beginning of the test towards the end of the test, the probability of answering correctly to this same question tends to decline as long as the, que the question moves towards the end of the test. And this is a sign of fatigue, a sign of ego depletion, a sign of lack of concentration or lack of effort eventually. And all these papers exactly find the, this, kind, this kind of results. And this implies that uh, you know, the overall performance in the test tend to decline on average in longer tests because in longer tests this fatigue tends to increase and so towards the end of the test performance decline and overall test scores is lower. Um, well this is not the end of the story because um, uh, we have a paper is, is exactly the paper we presented uh, three years ago and now is published on Oxford Bulletin of Economics and Statistics that shows that, uh, well, there is this decline by using um, uh, test, Ivancy test scores in grade two and five, but also, and this was not previously um, noticed, there is a large uh, heterogeneity in this performance decline across students. Uh, and there is a large variance uh, in this performance decline. And this has an additional uh, implication to the reliability and the accuracy of test scores because uh, you know, the longer the test scores, the smaller the component you noise when you measure the competencies of, of students, but the larger gets the component due to this variance in performance, in performance decline. And then it is not obvious that if you get this test longer, you get at least a test more reliable in terms of its ability to measure um, students' competencies. This is the first, um, this is, this is the first step. And this is where our new paper um, steps in. Not all tests are alike uh, because students put different levels of effort and attention depending on the stakes of the test. In low stakes tests, you might think that students, well, just go in class and, uh, uh, well, that they are more or less attentive to what they are doing. While instead in high stakes tests, it is reasonable to, to, to expect the students are really concentrated on the test and, and try to do their best. So it's likely that the performance decline in low stakes test and in high stakes test is quite different. Now, uh, what we do here is exactly uh, using again uh, in Valsi data from grade six and grade eight to test whether there is a difference between low stake and high stake test in terms of the performance decline across the test. Um, why grade six and grade eight? Well, grade six is one of the usual in Valsi test, which has nothing to do with students' performance. They do not provide any particular feedback to the single student. They are important for evaluation of the school system, but they are, uh, I mean, ineffective in terms of the evaluation 
of a single student or a single teacher, while instead in grade eight, at least up to 2015, in varsity tests with, were part of the final exam. Uh, and so they contribute to the average grade of the students. So they were an exam, a real exam. They were high stake. So we do compare for the same cohort of students, uh, the performance decline in grade six and in grade eight, because we take um, the, the um, grade six in the school year 2012, 2013, and grade eight in the school year 2014, 2015. So we are following exactly the same students that were in grade six and in grade eight. And we compare the performance decline for each single student across the two grades and so it across the two uh, level of stakes of the test. Now, this is the idea. Uh, let me uh, skip uh, uh, this, this um, slide on literature, which covers more or less the paper that I've uh, analyzed the, the problem of uh, uh, fatigue of performance decline in several manners. Um, and let me, let me show you uh, what we are doing. So we are estimating this kind of model here. Now, this is the performance for student I in, for question Q when question Q, Q takes a particular position P. And we have individual fixed effects, we have uh, question fixed effects, and we have the position of the question. Now, how it is possible to disentangle the effect of position of the question from the effect of question itself? Because different questions have different levels of difficulties, for instance. Now, this is possible because in Imbalasi, as in other international surveys, such as PISA, Teams, and others, there is a sort of a random allocation of the booklets uh, across different students. So you give different students exactly the same questions, but the order of the question is different across booklets and across students. And so within class, you have a variance, you have a variation uh, in the position that the single question takes across different students. And we do exploit exactly this kind of variation of the position of the question for each single student. Um, now, exactly, this is what I, I, I mentioned here. This is our identification um, process. We are using this uh, random allocation of booklets um, to, to, to pupils. And so random allocation of ordering of questions of the same questions across students. We are using grade six and grade eight for the same cohort of students. So 2012 and 2014 um, in terms of the um, school years. And uh, we consider only the math test. Why that? Because in math, we have this uh, you know, change in the order of the question, while in Italian, we have just a change in the order of the answers, while the order of the question remains constant. So we cannot use Italian for this exercise. Um, now, in uh, the, the sixth grade um, test, we have 48 questions. In the eighth grade test, we have 37 questions. Um, we focus only on the questions that change position across booklets because there are some questions that remain that keep the same position across all the five booklets. So we remove these questions because they do not, they cannot contribute to the identification of our, um, of our uh, position decline, of our performance decline. And so we remain with 44 questions in grade six and just 17 questions in grade eight, however spread along the full length of the test. So from position one to position 37. Um, we only consider students that can be tracked in both grades, and this amount to uh, about 80, between 80 and 95 percent of the full sample. Uh, the, the seeding Valsi code is able to, uh, I mean, is able to track, is able to, uh, can be used in order to track students across these two grades, and we retain uh, about 40, uh, 400,000 students in our sample, which is a huge number, which allows to uh, have very precise estimates at the end of the day. Um, we check that randomization holds, uh, so the random assignment of the booklets in class holds, also in this subset of students, the ones that can be tracked um, uh, across grades, and it is the case, we, we, we perform a number of uh, randomization inference tests, for instance, this West, uh, Westfall Young test, recent test, and we do prove that there is a randomization, um, and so we can go on safely, it is as if you know, the treatment, which is the booklet you have been assigned, is, uh, as in, is assigned to students in a, in a manner which is uh, uh, random or as good as random, so we can have very clear results. Now, again, um, these are simple descriptive statistics. Um, we have, you know, given that we can link students from grade six to grade eight, we can also exploit the information which is provided by students in grade six, where they do answer this additional student questionnaire. 
And so we do know uh, quite precise information about family background, number of books, home, and so on and so forth. And here you have a number of um, descriptives in this direction. Uh, okay, let me, let me come immediately to the main results. So this is what we do find. Uh, we do find that if you move the position of a given question by 10 ranks, by 10 positions, that, then the probability of answering correctly to that question declines by 1.5%. Is not a big number, but it's quite a significant number. And this is in grade six, okay? While in grade eight, where we are high stakes, this performance decline is still there, but it's way smaller. It's about one fourth of what we do find in grade six. So if you move by 10 position a given question, then the probability of answering correctly declines just by 0.4% compared to the 1.5% that we, we found before. Um, and so, I mean, this is the first result. We do find that in high stakes test, actually this performance decline is smaller compared to the low stake test, okay? And this is very, very much accordingly to, to our expectations. Now, let me make a step um, on, a step ahead, and let's try to, to understand whether this difference in performance decline is due to the fact that students in grade six were aged, say, uh, 11, and in grade uh, eight, we're age 13 or 14. So whether this difference is just an effect of maturity, differential maturity, students now are two years older. Now, what we do is exploiting the month of burn information, which is available in the, in the, in the data. And so we, we have quite some, uh, I mean, uh, variance in the month of birth across uh, students in grade six. And you can see to what extent one additional month uh, adds or reduces uh, to, uh, to the performance decline. Well, um, essentially what we do find is that in grade eight, uh, there is essentially no variance across, no variation across students born in different months. In grade six, there is a small variation of students and going in the direction that, uh, um, he, uh, so going in the direction that younger students have a stronger effect, a, strong, a stronger decline, and older students a smaller decline, but this is very small. And when we do project this smaller, this decline, when we project this uh, performance decline, uh, estimated as in grade six, two students, two year older. So when we think, okay, what could be the effect of grade six where students were two year older, then in that case, we do find still a quite significant and large difference between grade six and grade eight. So we do confirm that the effect, the decline, the performance decline in grade eight it is way smaller compared to the performance decline in grade six. It has nothing to do or very little to do with the different level of maturity of students between grade six and eight. Now, we go on and we check whether there is a difference across genders, and we do not find essentially any significant, any, I mean, appreciable difference between um, male and female students, both in grade six and in grade eight. And this is sort of surprising because instead in the, in the initial paper, we did find some variation across gender, but here it seems not the case anymore. Um, and here is um, the, uh, you know, the, the, the graphical representation of the heterogeneity of the performance decline in grade six, the blue line and grade uh, eight, the red line. You see that there is quite some heterogeneity in this performance decline. You see that in grade six, the average performance decline is here is about minus 15 is exactly the number I presented during the previous table. While instead in grade eight, the average performance decline is close to zero, is close to the minus 04 we have seen in the tables before. So this is entirely consistent, but now you see that there are quite strong um, uh, left and right tails in these distributions. And, um, and uh, in addition, we do also see, as uh, we have already remarked in the previous paper, that there are you know, not to all students, we do observe a performance decline. To a minority of students, which depends how big is this minority, depends on the grade and many other characteristics, to some students, actually, there is a performance improvement going along the test, perhaps because students need to, 
needs to uh, I mean some time to I mean um, to prepare or to set set the minds uh, to warm up for the test. So it may be that for some students actually performance increases uh, as the test goes on. Uh, and this is what we do observe, at least for the minority of the students. Uh, what is interesting here is that we do observe a much larger dispersion in grade eight than in grade six. Uh, now, uh, let me also show you that uh, when we do compute student by student, the performance decline in grade six and in grade eight, and we do represent uh, these performance declines here in this picture, we do observe that there is a pretty clear positive correlation. So meaning that if a particular student have a strong performance decline in grade six, it is the case also in grade eight. Of course, on different levels of magnitudes, but the distribution of these um, performance declines tend to be coherent between, between grades. Um, now, let me move to a parametric model to, to explain a little bit more the, that difference in, in the dispersion of uh, uh, the distributions we have seen before. Now, here, what I'm doing, I'm just considering one, uh, I mean, very important measure of family background, which has been used in many, many papers so far. So the number of books home. And we have just a single dummy to make the, the model as, sim as simple as possible. Uh, a dummy which takes one, if you have more than 100 books home or zero otherwise, okay? Now, what we do find here is that the larger the number of books at home, the smaller the performance decline, both in grade six and in grade eight, means that uh, students with a stronger family background perform better in the test, also along the test because they are more concentrated, more motivated, more committed to the test, something like that. But the impact of family background is much larger in grade eight when there is something at the stake and much smaller in grade five, in grade six. So in grade six, essentially, regardless of the family background, more or less, you have a performance decline, which is pretty, pretty homogeneous. Instead, in grade eight, when there is something at stake, well, family background matters. And uh, students coming from families with a stronger family background do perform better, do perform way better. Um, now, I'm concluding, um, we do uh, have evidence that the stakes at the test are correlated with uh, effort and commitment during the test, so there is this uh, clear um, negative relationship between stakes and performance decline. Um, students in, uh, in high stakes tests are better able or more willing to cope with fatigue and are more committed, exert more efforts. Um, we do have evidence of heterogeneity in grade six and in grade eight, much larger in grade eight than in grade six. And as I said uh, at the end of, of my presentation, family background matters much more in grade eight than in grade six in high stakes tests than in low stakes tests. And this explains to a large extent the, the larger heterogeneity. Uh, my last words is about the implication for the design of the test, of the invalid test. Well, in low stakes tests, which are now more or less all the invalid tests, uh, you need to take into account this performance decline because it's very important and the heterogeneity also is there. And so it's not obvious that a longer test would provide uh, a, real, a more, I mean, accurate and reliable measure of competencies of students. Actually, we do have in the previous paper, uh, I mean, a, a small model and a small discussion about what is the optimal length of the test by taking into account this heterogeneity in performance decline. So I, I refer you to, to that. Differently, in high stakes test, there is small performance decline. So if your concern is that of getting a better, more reliable picture of the student you are um, testing, then it is possible to add additional question in order to reduce the component due to noise and, and that, uh, in, in this way, a more accurate representation of students' competence. Um, that's all from my side. Thank you for your attention and I'm eager to, uh, to take your questions. Thank you very much.